I just got a software engineering job offer and I'm really, really happy about it. I started my job hunting on January 1st and I said, hey, we're going to get this done. We're going to lock down a job. And on February 10th, 40 days later, I got the verbal offer last week. I signed it up. And um, what I want to do in this video is talk about, okay, what did I do to actually get this thing that's this fast? What mistakes did I make that you can avoid? And overall, like what kind of like study plan can you do to set yourself up to doing this like you know, pretty fast, like on, in terms of like job hunting. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Raymond. I've solved over 1000 leak code problems. I'm like top 3% in competitive programming. And I also make these videos too, where I just talk about, you know, interview stuff, DSA stuff, system design stuff. And so let's get into it. First thing I wanted to talk about is like, okay, am I going to be taking this job? Uh, yes, I am going to be taking this. I'm going to be moving to California and I'm going to be, you know, meeting with other startup founders, maybe VCs, maybe um, other programmers, and I'm going to be paid well. So this is like a really easy decision to make. Um, and let's get into like how I actually did this. So I spent the past one and a half years like building up like my own business, own startup, whatever. And at the same time though, I spent also two hours every day, just took it out of my day to do leak code problems. And this was like a really, really, really big unlock because now all of the coding interviews were just so much easier. This really, this was like a really, really big thing that, that set me up just every day, keeping up on like the DSA stuff. I spent 300 hours of like 2024, just like watching other leak code streamers solving problems and I would like solve the problems alongside them. I also recorded videos onto my YouTube channel where I would talk about problems, breaking them down, actually like live streaming my study sessions. And all of that means is just that like coding interviews were really, really, really easy for me. Um, during this kind of like the 40 days of like job hunting that I did, I interviewed at like six different places, I think maybe six to eight, maybe or something like that. And whenever they give me a coding problem, they'd be like, oh, well, this is gonna last like one hour. And I would finish the coding problem in 30 minutes. And then they would pass me forward and then I would do it again. The coding interviews were just really, really easy because like I'm just really fast when it comes to, to to writing like those little snippet like algorithms really yeah and so that was like a really really big unlock was just getting good at like the DSA stuff second thing I did which is controversial in the job hunting kind of space is I use paid services right so I use several paid services that were going to give me the skills to being like you know, pretty good. So I paid $120 on a recruiter to review my resume and give me like, you know, break down, like what does a good resume look like? I spent $200 on behavioral mock interview expert, uh, Dan Kreuter. He also does YouTube videos. He also has like a product where he, he does, um, you know, mocks and things like that. And this thing was like a huge, huge, huge unlock for me and like fixing like the mistakes in my behavioral stories because I went from like, oh, like I sound like I'm like a loner to being like, oh, well, he's like a team player and like other things, other things like that too. Um, just hiring managers really like that. And so I got a massive return on investment because as opposed to being like a 50, 50 kind of person, like I look like I'm just a strong candidate, which can push me over to getting the job offer. And so I know a lot of like software engineers, they think, oh, well, all the information's free. It's all online. But like the information that's free is not going to tell you what mistakes you're personally making. It's not going to tell you any direction and a lot of the stuff it's it's the problem with like looking at like youtube videos is that it's all based on views and so anything that's going to be like the best is just going to have like anything that's going to have a million views isn't necessarily like the best for something that has 100 views it's like all based off like popularity and kind of like hive mind thinking so like if you have a piece of content that is actually really 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 good advice but isn't hive mind thinking well then like you will actually never see that piece of content and so the kind of the point here is just that like if like free resources work but you have to spend a lot of time digging to find like what is like the good stuff and you're you're not really going to find that um you know you could spend years learning it yourself um or you just pay somebody and then they just teach you everything so um that's what i did and it, i liked it it worked out for me the third thing i did was i mastered like what i call the core four of like a technical interview right so the core four of a technical interview is that there are like these four really there are only 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 four aspects that you're going to get asked in any of your technical interviews it's going to be like that's one trivia take-home projects coding or system design, like that's it. Like there's just only those four things every single time. And so if you just master all of those, all four of those, well, then you're just good and you're gonna pass your interviews. And so this is what I think I want to prep for is that I wanna be able to code in my interviews and impress the interviewer. I wanna be able to do a take home project and actually pass the take home project. I wanna be able to do the trivia and not get tripped up because I noticed that if I don't say the trivia answers, when they ask me, what is garbage collector in Java? Okay, well, 
now I like I just fail like they don't call me back every time I can't answer it right and so like the thing is like I'm thinking is okay well now let me just make sure I know that because when they do ask me it I can get moved forward and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down each of these like kind of four things at least the way that I see them and maybe it'll help you out but like um, step one that I mentioned was up of that core four is trivia, right? And so for trivia, this would mean that I would go to the job posting. I would figure out what engineer do they want? Do they want a React guy? Do they want a Python guy? Do they want a, you know, a Java guy, Postgres SQL guy, right? And then if they say that, then I would study the topics that they want. So if they say they want React, well, now I'm going to be studying what is React? What are components? What are hooks? I would type in the GPT, give me a list of interview questions in React. Give me an exhaustive list of interview questions in React, right? Or Java, whatever. And then I would make sure I knew all the answers to all those problems. And in the real interview, they would ask me questions just right off that list. And then I would kill it. And they'd be like, oh my God, you're so smart. And then um, you're so much smarter than all the other engineers who couldn't do that, right? And then I get moved forward to like the next phase, right? Which would be coding, take home, whatever. Um, like the, the kind of like just end result of this is that like, because I put in the time of just memorizing, 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 which I hate, I, by the way, like I hate trivia. I think it's really, really stupid. Like it's nice that you can understand knowledge maybe in about five seconds seconds of the candidate but um I personally like doing this I'm just like ugh like I I have to interview for this react place do I really want to learn react trivia like do I really want to go through this and in this case too again I said on January 1st like, hey we're gonna get this job and so um I grinded it out said hey okay we'll just grind it out like worst case um know the trivia take notes on it but um I knew the trivia and I took notes on it everything like that even turned to like one of my trivias like into a video a couple weeks ago, Java, the Java trivia. But overall, like this is how I ace trivia. Um, this is how I would do it again if I were to need to study for like a high frequency trading firm or whatever. The second part of like that core four is take home projects. Now, honestly, take home projects are just are just like um, like just style guide and like can you set up a project structure and then can you like do what the task that they assigned you was. So this is very very easy. I would in terms of project structure, like I mean, I think it's like pretty basic. You can look it up on YouTube. Um, in terms of like style guide, like look up Google's style guide, follow that. That's going to give you like a really good understanding of like what good code looks like. And then just make sure you follow that. Make sure you know it, make sure you know how to follow it. And then um, the third part is, can you actually code, right? Well, if you can't code, then like, I would just say like, bro, build some projects, right? Learn how to code. Um, learn the syntax of the programming language you're using, whatever. Now, the third part of the core four is like, can you code? So eventually the company's going to ask you to code something in front of a real engineer because they want to see all of that stuff. You know, it could be coding a to-do list, it could be coding a weather API, it could be a random leak code problem. It could be a practical coding problem that's related to like some real problem that they have on the job. But like, it doesn't really matter however they want to like spin it or whatever. Like all of these were easy for me because I've solved like just so many leak code problems. I'm just really good at the DSA stuff. So I understand how do I write a for loop? How do I do a hash map? How do I like decompose problems into like smaller subsets of problems, right? Like this, like this was the skill of lead code and to where like, it doesn't matter however they want to like phrase it or whatever, of whether it's a practical solution or whatever, but like, if you know lead code, it translates like massively, because if you can write a for loop, if you understand how to, how to navigate through arrays, if you don't understand how to do all of those tricks, there is no coding problem. That's actually like really scary for you, honestly. Um, even if it's like, you know, that, especially if you know the Google style guide too, so you can write clean code and you can also like do the DSA stuff. It's like really good. Like, um, I would say so at that point, it's just like, if they ask you coding, like a to-do list, it's just like, do you know the syntax like of react? Because in your brain, you're going to know all of the algorithms of like what you need to do. Now, the question is, do you know the syntax that's going to enable you to actually like, you know, get there. So coding was really, really easy. Again, I mentioned is that, you know, I've had interviews where the interviewer will say like, Hey, like the, like, you know, um, I've had interviews with people who hate leak code. Like they're like, Oh my God, leak code's like the worst. Like you should never, ever do leak code. And then they give up, they give their problem, which isn't really leak code. They're like, oh, okay, well we can do this, like the kind of non leak code way. But then I still just do it like just way faster doing it the leak code way or whatever. Um, do it faster. It's more efficient. It's the code is like clean and I, it's just a pass and I do it, you know, in like 30 minutes. And so, um, I wouldn't hate leak code. You know, I, I think it's really good for being able to write really short snippets of code. And in the case of interviews, you're always going to be asked to write short snippets of code because you don't have years. You don't have months, you have one hour. The final part that I'll say too is like for the core four is like system design. Now I've already have tons of videos on system design, but like I'm just gonna break this down super quickly, which is that like there's like two types of system design interviews. So one in the startup world is that relational database design. Like this isn't necessarily startups, but just there is relational database design where the companies that use relational databases, they wanna test, do you know relational databases? So they want you to design 
data modeling, whatever. And then there's the second one, which is high level system design, which is server scaling components. These are more in FANG, bigger companies that have to do with scale. You know, not always, but uh, you, you're going to be asked like one of these kind of two features of it. it. Personally, during my like this 40 day span, I only prepped like the second second part that I mentioned, which was the uh, scaling um, and servers and all that stuff. I think it's just more fun and, and more interesting. And also I had a ton of stuff to study for. Um, and so once I did get my job offer, there was another company that wanted to ask me the relational database stuff. And they did ask me that, um, but I just never studied it. So um, I studied maybe a fourth of what I did because I already had a job offer. I didn't really want to put in extra more work, although I should have, would have been nice, maybe negotiate, maybe competing offer, more opportunity, but I got lazy. And because I slacked, like I just, this was too slow on the relational database side. So that was that. Um, but in the, if in hindsight, what I should do is just study both, know them super well. The one thing that I did that I thought was really, really big that most software engineers aren't doing is that I had a YouTube channel and I had like a semi-active like LinkedIn profile, right? And I think it's like, these were huge for me getting opportunities. So one is that companies would actually like just start searching information online about me. Um, and I think they do this with all their candidates where they just go on LinkedIn, they go on like their website, whatever. They just try to like look at information uh, before you actually, maybe five minutes before your interview. And so um, I never told a company that I had a, a YouTube channel. Like, I mean, I in the in the 40 days, I never told a company. I would tell them in the past, but and if they find out, I don't really care. I never told companies that like I had like a YouTube channel. And however, like I do have it on my LinkedIn. So they would go on my LinkedIn profile. They would look, they would see the YouTube channel. Um, they would look at the posts that I wrote on LinkedIn. They would look at, you know, the videos that I had. And um, several startups told me, hey, I like these videos. Like, this is really, really cool. I've also had some some that just hated it and they just don't call me back. I've had one recruiter told me that um, they just didn't like that I was talking about like interview prep stuff. And so that was just like a no for them. But, you know, mostly I talk about DSA, I talk about system design, I talk about job, job hunting. And so, um, you know, they were pushed away from that side, but social media still massively helped me. So like, because I post on LinkedIn, I'm like semi-active. Um, I get recruiters reaching out to me literally every single day. And I have a video, I think, on LinkedIn stuff. Um, I do have it in my school group where I like just literally just break down every single thing that I do on my LinkedIn profile. But like um, I can reach out to every single day um, because my profile is a little bit more active. Um, it has a solid background. Um, I had a meta recruiter, I think, reach out to me, you know, Amazon, whatever. And so I would recommend it like it, it works for me. I'm not doing anything crazy. I just talk into a camera or I make some posts on LinkedIn about like, you know, projects and things like that. DSA system design. The big mistake, though, that I made with like my social media or that I'm making around with my social media right now currently is um I'm not making I don't make a ton of content around like the projects that I'm building or like you know the actual coding that the code that I'm writing um instead what I'm doing right now is like you know I'm teaching you guys here's how I get better at my job interview process and like hopefully you know help you guys but um if I didn't do that stuff if I didn't make videos like this where I'm just going talking about the job hunt process um it would build just a lot more credibility as a software engineer but that said personally like I just like making these videos I like talking about this stuff I think it's like really interesting and I also think it's like you know potentially helpful to you guys and so like, but like if I truly truly advanced cared about just advancing my career I would just make videos of the projects and I'm, I'm, I'm coding I would make videos on like react aws python ai and that would just push me towards so much more credibility when I talk in the interviews and I'm like, oh, well, I've done this, 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 like they could just watch it. And so this idea is like just really as a brand. It's like the more you associate yourself with coding, like the more people are going to be seeing you as the coding person. And they're when they hire, when they want to hire somebody, like they can just considering you, they can just watch your videos um, and coding in real time. But that said, you know, again, social media still help me regardless. I have hiring managers who look at my videos and they say, um, well, you know, like, I don't know if I want to hire you. Let me look at your YouTube and I'll see. And they pass me to the next round after they see my videos. So, um, that's happened before. Um, and I think it can happen for you guys too. It's not super hard. It's just like, you know, just talking to a camera, talk about your projects. And then when people can see them, like they can just give you referrals, jobs, whatever, and it can help push them, you know, a little bit over. So that's that. So overall, like, you know, this is kind of just my thoughts on, on getting my job offer. I um, wanted to make a video of that too, that would help you guys a little bit. And, uh, you know, the 2023 job market was rough. 2024 was rough, but hey guys, we're in 2025. Hey man, it can't always be rough. Um, but personally, like I've built up a ton of skills from doing it for the like 2023, 2024 and like 2025, like honestly, this job market was a joke. Like, honestly, like I'm coding like, just way faster than all the candidates. My trivia could use some work. I could, I could practice some trivia, but, um, 
you know, it, I'm still getting, t I'm getting tons of interviews and I don't know if that's from my LinkedIn profile or whatever, but I'm getting a lot and I would easily, easily be able to find like get another job offer, I think in like the next 30 days, if I need to, just cause I have the skills. If you guys want to get the skills too, you know, I would recommend it. I think it's really, really good. And I think it's possible, right? But it's just like, if you don't code, if you don't build projects, then you're going to fail like that core four. So I would focus on the core four hundred minutes every day, kind of like one of those, one of those little areas or whatever your weakest in and, um, and do that. Now, if you want more videos, I have a two hour system design guide. Um, that I kind of wrote wrote in my YouTube channel. You can watch that. I also have a video where I talk about like what I learned solving a thousand leak of problems. If you want to watch that, go ahead and I will see you guys in another video. So peace.